Welcome everybody, it's Easter morning, the tomb is empty, the body is missing, Christ is risen, Alleluia. Uh, we've gathered this morning in this place in this unusual way because our faith and our hope is in the risen Lord Jesus. We have something to celebrate today. We are Easter people, we have something amazing to celebrate together. This is our day. It's finished. It's over. There's more of them than us and they look a lot bigger. The villain's got the girl and his fingers on the trigger. Voldemort, Sauron and Vader reign. It's gone to penalties against the Germans again. It's a terrible feeling when hope is erased, faith misplaced, virtue defaced, gloom embraced, reputation replaced with the taste of disgrace. When you've pushed every door and it's been slammed in your face, when you realise you're third, in a two-horse race. So come sit with me on Golgotha's slopes. See human history at its lowest ebb. See the forces of goodness and grace on the ropes. Evil had spoken, last rites read. In a phony gown and thorny crown, he's mocked and knocked and shamed. As he staggers down through an angry town, they spit and hit and hate. Hands that forged galaxies and flung starry trails are pierced and punctured by merciless nails. His body succumbing to brutal infliction. These the horrors of crucifixion. And as dice are tossed, hope is lost. Desolate disciples count the cost. King of the Jews, his headrest embossed. A criminal's killing on Calvary's cross. And as last words cut through foul-smelling air, the whole of the cosmos cries out in despair. It is finished. It's over. But then dawn breaks on Easter day. Darkness quakes as shadows give way to the light. He resurrections the plan, it's why God sent him. And the comeback's on, there's a change of momentum. The powers of damnation in previous jubilation have been hushed and crushed by the Lord of creation. See, he takes the hit, stands where we should have stood, and that's why we call Friday good. And he's back with life and with us and blessed. And that's why we can know it as Sunday best. So to the four nil down, to the backs against the wall, Listen to his rallying resurgent call. And to those up against it in brokenness and pain, Easter's story roars, we go again. So thine be the glory, death's lost its sting. Here's to Jesus, the comeback king. Thank you. 
could not be raised But the Son of God is living So our hope is not in vain He has risen He has risen
Good morning and happy Easter. Thank you for joining us this Easter Sunday and we welcome you to Rayleigh Baptist Church. My name's Stuart. I'm Ricky. And I'm Jonathan. And whether you're watching along at 10.30 on Easter Sunday or later, you're very welcome. Uh, and we want to give a special warm welcome to those of you who are dialed in to RBC Offline. Uh, we pray that you are especially blessed during your time uh, with us today. But please, uh, even though you can't see us, don't worry, we are not together, we're still socially distancing. We are in our separate homes around Rayleigh. And later we'll be sharing communion together. So if you'd like to join us, please make sure you have some bread and some juice to hand. But at the start of this service, let's just pray together. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you that the power that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that's available to each and every one of us today. And we celebrate, Lord, your gift of salvation for us. And so as we gather together in our own homes, we recognize that we are connected by your spirit. And so we come together to give you all the praise and glory that's due your name today. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Now over to you, Ricky. Last week we asked you to let us know what you've been getting up to during the lockdown um, by sending in some videos and some photos and just emailing us. Um, and, uh, and you haven't disappointed, uh, I'm very pleased to say. Firstly, we have a very special message for you from one of our youngest members of the fellowship. Good morning, Kat. Thank you so much, Katie. That was absolutely beautiful. And good morning to you from all of us. And um, just a couple of other bits of, uh, of news, what people have been doing. Um, so Marion Twitchett apparently has been cooking for the old ladies in her close. Uh, I'm sure that she uh, they've appreciated that. Dazza has been making hot cross buns for the, the, the hungry young people in his house. Um, and, and Chris Gorman seems to be on a 24-7 dog walk at the moment. Um, I, I, haven't, I haven't noticed actually whether it's the same dog each time, but I will check next time I see her. Um, and last night some of our, our children met for an online session of Fridge, um, where they heard the Easter story um, and they were given uh, a couple of craft activities to do and set a challenge for them to, uh, to join in with. Now for some photo and video contributions of what people have been up to. Uh, first of all, there is this um, from Alan Cornwall, who has been wood turning. It's absolutely beautiful, um, but I have no idea what it is. If you think you know, please send the answer on a postcard to the usual address. And then we have um, a picture from, from Callum and one from Sonia. Callum has made the temple and Sonia has coloured a cross for the front window. This is an idea that was shared during our service last week, just in the chat session um, on the side there. Next, we have a, a video of, of what Steve and Annie Brett have done outside their house. 
Right, so this is what can be seen from the 1T7. We have the cross with the lights on it and flashing away merrily so that everybody on the 1T7 can see that Jesus is King and that we, He's the Lord of Lords. What a great way to witness to those who are passing by or those in the neighbourhood. Uh, and then uh, finally for today, um, we have some videos from the Makachek family. We have uh, Alice doing a somersault on the trampoline. Joseph completing a two by two Rubik's Cube. And I should just say I've sped this one up. And finally, Helen demonstrating that lockdown has uh, become far too much for her to cope with. I just wanted to say a quick hello to people who are watching from around the world um, and uh, we know that Anne Green's son has been watching in Zimbabwe. Um, if you are um, watching from outside um, of, uh, of the UK would you, would you just put a comment in the, uh, in the chat section on the right hand side of your screen and let us know who you are. We would love to welcome you as well. And we know that we have a number of people in the fellowship who are working for the NHS, um, some on the front line in, in many ways in hospitals and GP surgeries, some providing uh, hospital transport to um, infected patients. Um, but we've also got people who are, are on the front line in terms of providing um, education support for student, uh, children of, of key workers. Um, and also um, we have some people in social care um, who are doing a fantastic job as well um, and even people in the supply chain people who are, are driving the vans to deliver the food to keep the shops going um, to enable us to eat and we just want to say a massive thank you to all of you for all that you're doing please know that we are praying for you regularly um, and we pray for your protection and for the protection of your family um, and we pray that God will be able to use you in incredible ways in this, this difficult time but thank you so much for all that you're doing for us so whatever you get up to this week, we want to encourage you again to stay home, to stay safe, but also to stay connected. And now over to our resident Blue Peter presenter, Rosanna Conway, for an activity that you can do either during the rest of the service um, or you can go back and watch again after and complete it later. Thank you, Rosanna. Good morning. For today's Easter activity, We'll be doing crowns. There'll be two designs that you can choose from. One is going to be a paper plate and one is going to be our paper card. The paper crown card, you will need decorating pen or pens, scissors, something to poke your hole with, so I've just got a sponge, and paper plates, and obviously tape. First of all, you're going to put the plate over the whatever you're gonna, and you're just gonna put a hole. There we go. Then you're gonna um, cut eight um, triangles with this. I'm just gonna cut four to start with, and then I'll cut them in half. Once you've got all out, you can decorate. Once you've done with the crown, you can fold the edges to make it look more like a crown. Looks like. So right here I've done the cross and then I've done an egg, then I've done two, and I've just done a pattern. So it goes around, really nice, really simple. It should look like something like that. It's cute. Paper hat time. This is how to make a paper hat from just normal paper. All you need for this is a piece of paper or card, some scissors, some stickers or something fun to put on, and tape. If you don't have these, you can just use pens like I am as well. First of all, you've got to cut like
Then once you've got your two bits, all you need for this bit is cell tape. You're going to join these two together and you're going to get some cell tape. Change your plans, we're doing it on our cheek as this thing as well. Okay, so let's measure it. Okay, now that I've measured, let's get sticking. And you can start decorating. This is one that I made earlier. Post pictures of your crabs on the Facebook page. Also, have a great Easter. If you'd like to join us in communion later, uh, now would be a great time to go and get some bread and some juice if you haven't already. But please do hurry back as Faith and John are going to lead us in a song to help prepare us to share that meal together. Either sing along if you know it, or just listen to the words and reflect. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my soul rolled away, it was there. Receive my sight now, no longer I, but Christ in me. I will run to the cross where you opened up my eyes. I will sing of the love that saved me. I will bow in the place where your death became my life. I will run, I will run to. Our reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 14 to verse 20. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. 
And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So the Bible encourages us with this promise that if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. You know, no matter who we've been in the past or what we've done, when we trust in Jesus for our salvation and receive the forgiveness that is offered through his cross, we become someone new. All the things that we've done wrong, all the things that we will ever do wrong, all of our wrong thoughts, all of our wrong words, our hurtful and selfish actions that have hurt others and have separated us from God, they've been dealt with for good. Because God reconciled us to himself through Christ, not counting our sins against us. We are now his dearly beloved children, washed clean and made new in the likeness of his son. So as we meet together this morning, this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, it seems so fitting that we share again in this meal that that Jesus shared with his disciples on the evening before his crucifixion, where he gave them this very simple instruction. Remember me. You know, Jesus knew that we would need something like that because people tend to be forgetful, even of the most important things. And so whilst they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it in two to remind us that he died or would die for our sins, that he would take our punishment upon himself. And later in the meal, he took a cup of wine to remind us that it was his blood that has made us clean and spotless before God, that we are accepted, that we are forgiven, that we are restored to a new life with him that stretches on to the ends of time. You know, it's a gift of grace and of love, and it's freely given. He died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised. You know, the resurrection, Jesus coming back to life is proof that sin has been dealt with once and for all. That death is not the end, because life is. So today, as we enter into this meal, we not only remember, but we're also joyful. And we live knowing that the risen Christ Jesus lives with us as well today through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's for that reason that this table is open to everyone, whether you're young or whether you're old, who have asked Jesus to come into your life as Lord and Saviour, to be your special friend. So says Paul, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God this morning. On this Easter Sunday, on this Resurrection Sunday, let us remember that gift of life that is offered through Jesus, that gift of reconciliation and salvation that was bought for us through Jesus' death on the cross. And let us give thanks as well. But when we accept that gift, we are forgiven. We are set free to experience the fullness of God in our lives. 
The old is gone and the new is here. So come to this table when you're fearful to be made new in love. Come when you're doubtful to be made strong in faith. Come when you are regretful to be made whole again. Come old and young because there's room at this table for all. Now Paul talks about, uh, about this Lord's Supper and he says that before you eat of the bread and you drink of the wine, that you should examine yourself, that you should prepare yourself so that you don't dishonour uh, what we are doing here. And so we're just going to spend a few moments to, to reflect on those words, to get ourselves right, as it were, before God, before we enter in to this special meal. So let's pray. So most merciful Heavenly Father, we confess the things that we have done wrong in our thoughts, our words and our actions. We're sorry if we've not loved you with our whole heart and we're sorry if we've not loved others as ourselves. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, forgive what we have been. Holy Spirit, come and help us change what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may be a people that act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and having given thanks for it, he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So take a piece of bread and eat it, giving thanks that Jesus has paid the price for each and every one of us. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. As you take the cup, hold on to it for a moment and we'll all drink together, recognising that we are all part of God's family. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gift of life that you have given to each and every person. Thank you for taking our place on the cross. Thank you that you bore the penalty that was due us. Thank you that it is your love and your grace by which we are saved. And Lord, this morning we, we praise your name. We give you thanks for all that you have done for us. We give you thanks for the way in which you have made it possible for us to receive life and life in all of its fullness. Thank you for this day, the day in which your son rose again, that we celebrate today, that death is defeated, that life has victory and that each one of us can walk in that new life. The old is gone. The new has come, and we celebrate that today. Amen. Today's reading is from Hebrews 2, verses 9 to 11 and 14 and 15. But we see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honour, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. 
and bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the ones who make people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. A couple of months ago, whilst we were all still recovering from Christmas, I had an idea um, about the design for our promotional material for our Easter services and Easter events. It tied in closely with the Christmas design and the topic. For Christmas we had a picture of a crown of fairy lights and the line, Jesus, the gift of hope. So for Easter, the idea was for a picture of a crown of thorns with the line, Jesus, the source of hope. I was quite proud of my idea um, and the subsequent design that came about. And since that, that moment, the whole world has been talking about crowns day in and day out. By which, of course, I can't mean anything but the coronavirus. And I've mentioned before, but I'll say again, that corona means crown. The word coronation means to crown a sovereign, a king or a queen. Um, and you'll understand includes the word corona, coronation. So it seems quite fitting that today we're going to focus on crowns. Specifically, two crowns that Jesus wore. He was one king, but he wore two crowns. The story of Easter includes two very different coronations for Jesus with two very different crowns. A crown of thorns forced on him to mock him and a crown of glory as Jesus faithfully fulfills his mission here on earth. Now we can't enter into the celebration of Easter Sunday without first remembering the suffering of Jesus. That's why Holy Week is so important. It's a time of remembrance and of reflection, a time to enter into the story more deeply, to appreciate more fully the celebration that is to come. In order to understand the celebration, we need to understand the horror. The cross is the central symbol of the Christian faith. It's a torture device like a, a gas chamber or a guillotine. And what, what Jesus went through for me and for you was unspeakable. I mean, we can speak about it, but we choose not to in great detail because it was so horrific. It was agony. It was literally torture. It was execution. But thankfully, it wasn't the end. First of all, Jesus is forced to wear a crown of thorns. After his very dubious trial and conviction, Jesus is beaten and flogged. The soldiers weave together some thorn branches into the shape of a crown. They force the crown on Jesus' head and put a purple robe on him and a staff in his hand. And they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They wrote the same name on a sign and placed it above Jesus' head on the cross. This is Jesus, King of the Jews! Last week we talked about symbols, about how something can have a deeper meaning than what simply seems obvious. And thorns are a symbol of sin and of struggle. 
in Genesis chapter 3, because of Adam and Eve's sin, because of their selfishness, their self-centred actions, God cursed the ground. And from that moment it produced thorns and thistles to make their life difficult. Thorns are a result of man's sin. And sin simply means going our own way, living for ourselves rather than following God's plan and God's best for us. The crown of thorns at Easter is a sign, a symbol. Jesus wearing the crown of thorns is a sign that on the cross he will be bearing the weight of our sin. It's a symbol of guilt and of shame. But it's not his guilt and shame, it's ours. But Jesus submitted to horrendous abuse out of love for the world. Suffering horribly and undeservedly from his arrest right up to the moment of his death. He even had love for his attackers, his killers, his executors. As they executed him, he prayed for their forgiveness. Father, he said, forgive them. Jesus deserved that crown of thorns, but only because he put himself in our place. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. Jesus standing there in our place, taking that beating, hanging in our place on the cross. God made him who had no sin of his own to be sin for us. It goes on to say that so in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus gladly wore that crown of thorns, gladly took the beating and the flogging for you and for me in order that we would be saved from that punishment. That we could be made right with God and be able to receive all that God has for us. Life in all its fullness, here and in eternity. And Jesus' death on the cross made that possible. He paid the price for you and for me. He conquered sin. What happened three days later proves that anything is possible with God. Because just three days later, the dead Jesus is alive again. The grave is empty and Jesus has defeated even death. He proved that God is able to fulfil the promises that he makes to us. In our reading earlier from Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, We see Jesus now crowned with glory and honour because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Jesus is only crowned with glory and honour because he suffered death in our place. He wore the crown of thorns. He wore our sin and our suffering in our place so that we didn't have to. Jesus had gone from a forced coronation with a crown of thorns to being crowned with glory and honour. But why? Let's read on in Hebrews chapter 2. He too shared their humanity. He became fully human just like us, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. What does it mean when it says that the devil holds the power of death? Well, the devil holds the power to tempt us to do things that will drive a wedge between us and God, that will separate us from our Heavenly Father. And when that relationship is damaged, it can lead to our spiritual death. 
by Jesus' death, he breaks the power of death over us and frees us even from fear of death. There's a great song called In Christ Alone, which features these words. It says, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. No guilt in life because Jesus has already paid the price for us. We don't need to carry that feeling of guilt or of shame any longer. No fear in death because Christ has made us right with God again. This is the power of Christ in me. In Christ, through his death and resurrection, God makes us what we could never be without him. Sons and daughters of God who not only see and recognise God's glory, but actually we get to share in it. How amazing is that? The message of Easter is so powerful and yet so simple. Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, became sin for us. He died in our place. He took the punishment that we deserved and paid the price that we could never pay ourselves in order that we might be made right with God the Father so that we can receive the gift of new life. New life now, fullness of life here and in eternity after we die. There's a story in Acts chapter 2 um, of the woman at the well. Jesus is talking to this uh, this woman and revealing who he is. Um, and she doesn't understand fully to start with. But Jesus says to her, uh, if only you knew the gift that God has for you. And he's, he's implying that she, if she knew the gift, she would grab it with both hands. And actually that's what, what happens if you read on in the story. But my prayer for you today is that if you don't know Jesus, my prayer is that you would seek him out, that you would explore the things that he said, that you would examine the things that he did, and that you would grab with both hands the life that he has offered to you. At the end of John's Gospel, after Jesus has been raised to life and has appeared to his disciples, and after he's had the conversation with Doubting Thomas, where he addressed Thomas's doubts, John explains that all these things have been written for two reasons. Firstly, that we might believe. And secondly, that because we believe, we will have life. The life that Jesus offers us. It's okay to have doubts, but it's not okay to live in those doubts. Thomas asked questions. And Jesus answered and addressed those doubts. And then Thomas believed and he had the life that Jesus had spoken about, that Jesus had offered to him and offers to each one of us. Easter does not end with a crown of thorns or a wooden cross, but with an empty grave, a risen king, and with a living hope for all who believe that Jesus is Lord, for all who love him. And so my final questions are, do you love him? Do you know him? And do you want to? The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's a king of Israel. He's a king of righteousness. He's a king of the ages. He's a king of heaven. He's a king of glory. He's a king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I, I wonder do you know him? <laughs> my king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? 
He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him, death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah. I can say with confidence, that's my king. I wonder, do you know him? You know what, it's never been easier to respond to Jesus' offer of salvation. We would all usually do this in a, a live service and we would ask you to, to raise your hand or to stand up, uh, even though we know how daunting that can be for you. But you know what, today, no one else can see you, apart from those who are sitting with you. Um, and hopefully you'll be pretty comfortable with them after three weeks of lockdown already. But we're going to provide a way for you to respond today online. The Bible says that Jesus stands at the door and knocks and we just need to let him in. We just need to invite him into our life. And doing that, inviting Jesus into your life, committing to follow him does not make life perfect. It's not an insurance policy that protects against difficulties in life, but it makes those difficulties so much easier to bear. Jesus gives strength to the weak. He gives peace to the fearful, confidence to the doubting, forgiveness to the sinners, hope to the hopeless, and love to the unlovable. He offers eternal life to the dying and adoption into a loving worldwide family. So I want to give you the opportunity to respond, not respond to me, but respond to Jesus this morning. If you have felt your heart being stirred by what's been said, or you have just sensed something going on inside of you. And if you want to say yes to Jesus' invitation to eternal life with him, if you want to invite Jesus into your life, to submit your life to him, you can do it online this morning. In the chat window to the right of the screen, you will see a way of raising your hand this morning. Okay, it's a virtual raising of your hand. 
And I just want to say, if you want to respond to Jesus' invitation, I would encourage you just to click raise your hand. If you don't, that's absolutely fine. You can click dismiss. Nobody will ever know. Now, you may be fascinated by the technology and you may want to see what happens if you click raise hand. Um, but please only click it if you genuinely want to respond to Jesus this morning. Let me pray and then I'll give you that opportunity. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would stir our hearts this Easter morning. Lord, we are so grateful for all that you have done for us. But you want us to share the joy of our salvation with others. So we pray that your Holy Spirit would be on the move. We know that even though we are meeting virtually, you can reach and minister right to our hearts. So we pray, come Lord Jesus. Come by your spirit, come in power and yet in gentleness and have your way, we pray. And we pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ, the King of glory, the risen Saviour. Amen. So now is your time, now is your chance to click raise hand if you would like to respond to Jesus this morning. And if you have done that, would you pray this prayer with me and say uh, a hearty Amen at the end of it. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice on the cross in my place. I'm sorry for the things that I've done which have taken me away from your best for me and for my life. And I now choose to turn away from them and instead turn to you. To the best of my ability, and with the help of your Holy Spirit, I will turn away from the things of the world, and I will turn towards you. Come and change my heart, and bring me to life in a way that I have never known before. I now receive the gift of your salvation, and the gift of your joy. Thank you, Jesus. I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you clicked raise your hand and prayed that prayer, then you will have been taken to a, a short form. Um, after the service, please fill that form in and a member of the team will be in touch with you. We would love to, to chat with you. We'd love to help you on your journey. We'd love to pray with you and to provide you with some resources that will assist you as well as you start out your new life with Jesus. Now, as this is pre-recorded, I don't have a clue whether anyone has responded, but I, I've been giving thanks ahead of time in faith that Jesus will have stirred hearts this morning, that Jesus will have had his way by his spirit and that he would have drawn people to himself this morning. So if you can see people in the chat who have responded or if you can see that there are the, the numbers of people who've responded, then, then would you join me in praising God, not just now, not just as we sing in a moment, but join me in praising God today and in the week ahead. And as we close our service, let's worship Jesus, the only one who is worthy, the only one who deserves all our praise and our adoration, the one who gave everything he had and who in turn deserves everything that we have. Let's worship him.
die. My riches gain. I count the loss and poor consent on all my pride. Oh, hi. 
was a name. His name was Jesus, my Savior's cross. I set the sin of Primo as a name. His name is Jesus. Oh, Christ be praised. I have victory. So thank you so much for joining us today. We are really grateful that you've made the time to come and celebrate with us at Rayleigh Baptist Church. Um, let me just pray as I close. Father God, I thank you that we have been able to come together today to celebrate that despite the restrictions that are put on us, the limitations that we find ourselves living under, Father God, we've been able to come and gather as your people to celebrate the risen Jesus Christ today. And Father, we thank you that, that just as, uh, as Easter didn't end with the empty tomb and, and then that was, the, that was it, Lord, that, that Jesus continued, Jesus lived and continued his ministry for a short time and then gave that for the disciples to do. Lord, help us to remember as we close our service today uh, that this is not the end for us either. For many, Lord, it will be just the beginning. Lord, help us to live every day as Easter people, as people who live in the hope that Jesus alone can bring us, people who, who understand what that means, people who feel the joy of that and share it with those around us. So Father, we thank you for all that you have done through your son, Jesus. And Lord, we invite your spirit to come and live with us 
live in us and be uh, evident through us to those around us, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So again, thank you for joining us. We, uh, we hope that whatever you get up to today, whatever you get up to this week, that you are truly blessed this week. God bless you.